Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for uh, attending this evening's uh, webinar, um, if, I, if I can call it that. Um, this evening, we're going to just talk about our procedures for awarding um, or for nominating the GCSE results to the exam boards. So thank you for attending this evening. We're just going to talk to you briefly about how we will be coming to a judgment on the, the GCSE grades um, for this year. Um, this is the start of a process, uh, or a communication process, which will cover a number of areas over the next um, over the next uh, few weeks, so that we could just keep uh, clarifying things for you. Um, just a reminder, please, that we are going to be recording this presentation, uh, so that we can place that on the uh, the school's YouTube channel, which is now. You can find a link to that from the, the home page of the website. Um, I think most people have done this, so thank you very much indeed for muting both your microphones and your cameras. Um, if you have any questions, can you please ask those in the chat function and we will try to answer them at the end of the presentation. If you ask a question and we cannot answer it, then uh, we will go away and research them and put them in an FAQ section on the website. First of all, I'd like to provide a little bit of reassurance um, with regards to the mocks. Um, the mock results will not be the final GCSE grades. Students will have the opportunity over the next few weeks to demonstrate progress and improve their grades. If they have underperformed in the mocks, please uh, make sure that they don't worry, but equally, you don't worry. Um, but what they must do is focus on showing that progress in all the subjects over the next few weeks. So what are we going to be using for um, assessing the, the GCSE results? So um, apologies, some of this is, is a little bit wordy, but um, it's, the, it's written to sort of provide as much information as possible. So any student work that is produced in response to assessment materials, so for example, past papers uh, provided by the exam boards, and this will include groups of questions, past papers, or similar materials such as practice or sample papers. So in the past, for exam practice, uh, the teachers would set some sample papers or may actually just set a question during a lesson. Um, for those involved in subjects covered by the CADT bracket, it may also include non-exam assessments. Um, that's coursework in old money, um, and this will, these will, will be included even if they haven't been fully completed. Any work that uh, staff have uh, produced and that are sort of school devised tasks that reflect the specification, or in other words, what students are expected to study, that follow the same format as exams, and have been marked in a way that reflects the awarding organisation or the exam board's mark scheme. So in other words, in my case, I'm a history teacher, um, albeit occasionally, um, and I might devise a, a, an essay question and mark it with uh, the, the generic mark schemes, but it's never appeared in, a, in an exam question. We may also look at substantial class or homework, and that includes work that took place during lockdown. Any internal tests that have been taken by the students or mock exams that have been taken over the course of study. And we'll also include records of a student's capability and performance over the course of study in a performance-based subject such as music and performing arts. <clears throat> Other sources of evidence may be the um, additional assessment materials known as AAMs, such as RAP tests. Um, what these will do is they'll give the students the opportunity to show what they know, understand or can do in an area of content that has been taught but not yet assessed. It will also give them the opportunity to um, show improvement and to validate or replace an existing piece of evidence. And they'll support consistency of judgment between teachers or classes by giving everyone the same task to complete. These may include the exam board provided assessment materials that have been issued by the exam boards to help schools with um, 
their judgments on GCSEs. And one final one that we are going to be doing um, is an assessment week in the week commencing the 17th of May to further inform and support our judgments. These will be short composite assessments of no more than one hour 30 minutes on what the students have studied. These will have exam access arrangements in place for students that are entitled to them. So these are a, a short series of assessments um, that uh, we're hoping, as I said, that will inform and support our prior judgments. These are an opportunity for students to really demonstrate that they have made some progress. Those students that are studying subjects such as technology, art and photography will have as much time as required prior to the deadline to complete a portfolio of work which represents their best work. Now, there will be an internal deadline for this, um, which must be met because marking and moderating the work prior to submitting the grades can take a long time. Moderation is where a group of teachers get together to agree um, the marks for candidates. And what they will do there is they would take a sample of the work and um, each take turns in marking it. And if they agree that the marks are appropriate, then they will continue. That can be quite a lengthy process, particularly um, for subjects such as art and photography and the technology subjects. So why have we adopted this approach? Well, a number of other schools in the locality have uh, set uh, a kind of almost like a, a week of exams or a fortnight of exams. Um, we wanted to draw on this wide range of sources so that we are in a position to provide this holistic overview of the students' progress over what I'm sure you will agree has been a hugely challenging 15 months or so. By using such a range of their work, we hope that we can avoid a bad day at the office scenario, which could occur if we were to have one-off exams in the style of GCSEs with no other assessments taken into account. We will also take into consideration any mitigating circumstances which may have impacted upon individual students and exam access arrangements. Coming on to it, it's very, very important that our results have integrity because if we inflate the results, um, the exam boards and the Joint Council for Qualifications of JCQ could inspect the school and inspect the data and um, look at um, our marking and so on. So all work will be moderated, as I said. Um, results will be compared to previous year's exam results, both as a group and an individual subject. So what they're looking at, they are saying that we should take the years 2017 to 2019. We'll make a national comparison through CISRA, our data analysis software. Now, CISRA is used by um, thousands of schools throughout the country, and we will take part in their collaboration process in which there are uh, roughly 2,000 schools and they'll compare the data. Now, that gives us a very useful national comparison um, in which it enables us to get a national picture. And it's invariably very, very close to the, uh, the actual national picture that's produced during the, the summer time. So we must have clear evidence of the student's attainment, in other words, their results and their progress. And we must have a portfolio of work and assessments for each student in each of the GCNC subjects, which clearly shows their results and the progress they have made. We can only provide grades for the work that we have. Um, this means that we cannot award grades based on uh, potential or target grades. If somebody has designed, decided not to put in the effort and has, has, is not working uh, as they should be, or has opted out, if you like, of an exam, then unfortunately we can't award that based on their targets because we wouldn't have any um, evidence for their, um, for their progress and for their exam results. 
I'm now going to hand over to Mr. Leary, who is in charge of the exams for the uh, for the, the school, and he is going to talk through um, a variety of other issues as well. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, one of the things that uh, we'll be aware of in the past difficult 15 months or so, there are many, many mitigating circumstances. Um, I just really want to be clear with people there, just to say, if you do have any mitigating circumstances, which you believe may have had an impact on your son and daughter's GCSE performance, then you must communicate them to the school. The date is on there, it's Friday the 21st of May, it's the end of that assessment week. There will be a record of that that we need to keep for JCQ and the original awarding bodies, the exam boards, and so there is a form which will help you to document the information that you'll need to provide to put us on this. For example, it may be that your son or daughter is isolating during the assessment week. In that case, if they're asymptomatic, then we will try and do the assessment at home over Teams. We'll try and make sure you've got all the information and we will be invigilating that by your Teams. It's not something we've done before, but it's something that we have practised. Usual thing, if they are symptomatic, then they would return to school when told to do so by the healthcare professionals. And if they miss assessments, we can take in all the previous work and this would be an example there of mitigating circumstances. Obviously, in both cases in that, please do not return early to school. Your son or daughter will have the right to appeal their grade in any subject. I must just emphasise that it is your son or daughter that has that right to appeal. It is their grade. We don't have all the information for that. The appeals process, as you can imagine, is quite complicated. As soon as we do, we will place this on the website and we may, depending on how this information affects us, do another webinar purely on appealing the grades. Some further information and where to find it. So as I play with the points there on our school website there, there's an area for the exams. Uh, if you click on there, it will then open the GCSE area 2021. A copy of this presentation will be on there once that has been uploaded. And also any communication that has gone on from the school is also logged there. This is where the information for the appeals will go on there. I would just highlight as well that it's a very dynamic situation. It could change at any time. So please just keep trying to update, I'm sorry, please keep trying to check the website which will be updated straight away. Once we've done that, we will then try and message people via the usual routes. A link on there also puts you through to the information for parents from uh, JCQ. There is a, a handy timeline in there that will give you the dates when we have to submit our information to schools, uh, for it from schools, and also when the results days are. Thank you very much. OK, so um, that is the information that we have uh, at this moment in time. This is what we're, um, we're doing. Um, what I'll do is I will go through the questions. Um, I'll, I'll sort of read them out and then I will um, uh, I'll try and answer those. Um, somebody said the, the short assessments that you're talking about are just another set of exams. Um, yeah, there's an element to, uh, of truth in that. Um, but what we wanted to do was we wanted to have a final um, area which could not really be questioned if it's if it's done in the uh, exam room and in exam conditions. Um, we wanted it to, to be quite clear that 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 was a, a sort of an open and honest assessment there. Um, it also gives us an opportunity for students to sort of perform really well if they're, if they're good at performing in exams and, and it's really just a contributing factor to the whole uh, the whole picture if you like um, it also allows us to to do the exam access arrangements for those students that are entitled to them okay quite a long one um, will the short assessments based on work covered between now and the 17th of may 
Um, if not, and this includes content covered through the GCSE course, some students may have missed that learning due to periods of isolation. <clears throat> How will you mitigate against this and ensure a level playing field? Again, this is one of the reasons why we've taken such a broad uh, approach to the, the pieces of work. Um, the assessments at the end of the, on the 17th of May will include work that has been taught throughout the GCSEs. Um, again, we will take into consideration the, the individuals concerned and those that uh, have missed the work. Um, and again, what we're hoping is that the the work or the, the broad range of assessed materials that we'll be using will mitigate against this and ensure a level playing field. I have to say that our uh, our staff know the students um, very well indeed and so will be aware of um, just who has faced those difficulties. Okay, what, um, what other sorts of mitigating <coughs> circumstances can be taken into account? Um, I think we are looking at uh, illness, either uh, towards the candidate or um, immediate family members. Um, there may be, uh, and again, depending on the, the seriousness of that, it could be something as simple, uh, not simple, but uh, something as immediate as uh, falling down the stairs and breaking an arm on the day of any assessments or being unable to do the work as a result of that. Um, as I said, it may be illness, it may be something traumatic that has happened as well. Mr Leary. Yeah, mitigating circumstances. This is different to people who already have exam access arrangements. Those things are already in place. Um, as Mr Edgar's just alluded to, mitigating circumstances are things that we're made aware of either prior um, to any assessments going on as of, as of now, and also those things that happen immediately, you know, you've missed the bus, the students are a little bit stressed in the morning before they sit a particular exam, or someone's been ill and we don't yet know about it. Thank you. Okay. Um, and also, uh, including in that, I, I should have mentioned that if it's unfortunate enough to have happened, uh, a family bereavement and so on. So there's a, there's a, there's a broad range um, that GCQ have identified as mitigating circumstances. Um, uh, do you have an idea yet when the last day of the school will be for the year 11s uh, and do you know when the results will now be released? Um, yes, I'll be communicating that in due course. Um, I just want to keep, uh, we just want to wait until we have a clear idea of what the government is planning to do. We're waiting a sort of um, confirmation of that over the next few days. Uh, I've got an idea in my head, but if you don't mind, I'll keep it uh, uh, I'll keep it uh, under my hat at the moment. The results will be released, and I'm just trying to think, 12th of August, Thursday the 12th of August. Okay. Um, okay, some subjects have had less support than others during lockdown. Will this be taken into consideration? Um, I think um, if the individual concerned that's asked that question could uh, see either myself or Mr Leary tomorrow and we can we can talk about that. Um, I'm, I'd be very surprised at that, but nevertheless, I want to sort of, I, I would have that discussion um, with you and we can, we can look at the specific nature of that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Um, as we said, what we will do is we will um, probably have another webinar once we get the appeals process sorted out. Um, we will get that um, we'll get that sorted out and communicate that with you. Okay, so one last question there. You said you'd be looking at previous year's data. We'll be able to get this information from the other secondary schools if they recently moved to the school. Oh, sorry, I should have been a bit clearer on that. When the 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 um, previous year's data that we're looking at would be our school's performance data. So how our school has performed in all its subjects and also how each individual subject has performed. So we're looking at our exam results for the years 2017 to 2019. We will get data, um, or we do have data 
on uh, other students if they have transferred to the school, if they sat the key stage two SATs. Um, so we should have that national data in hand. Um, but the data that we will be referring back to will be our own school's performance between the years 2017 to 2019. Right, OK, if there are any other questions that you, you um, need to sort of uh, think about, please get in touch with the school um, via admin at vanavalenschool.co.uk. Um, and Sean's just typing that up at the minute. Um, thank you very much indeed for that. So if there are any other questions that you think of um, and you haven't had a chance to think about it or it occurs to you um, this evening, um, by all means, please get in touch with us via admin and we will try and respond to that. We will put the, we'll also try and put that up as an FAQ section on the website as well. Thank you very much indeed for your time this evening. Um, I appreciate that uh, it's uh, it's a little bit easier now to, to give up that time with the, the remote meetings, but still, nevertheless, thank you for taking the time um, this evening. And as I said, if you've got any further questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us via the email address. Thank you and have a good evening.